What's going on guys? It's been a little while since I brought you anything archery related, but with that being said, today's video is gonna be all about my brand new longbow setup. This is something that's been in the works for several months, and this is the Stalker Stick Bows Coyote FXT. Let's jump on into it. All right guys, so let's talk about this bow. Uh, a couple years ago, I was in the Full Draw Film Tour, uh, and then another one of the guys that were in the Full Draw Film Tour was South Cox, which also is the owner and the bowyer that makes Stalker Stick Bows. That was what kind of turned me on to him originally, um, but then my buddy Kevin from Michigan also mentioned his bows and has is the, was the one that was kind of vital in getting me back into shooting traditionally. Before this bow, I shot a Hoyt Buffalo, I'm sorry, a Hoyt Dorado uh, recurve, uh, which black riser, camo limbs, awesome bow, but I wanted something that looked more traditional. I wanted a long bow, a reflex deflex long bow. I also wanted something that I could take down, fly with if I ever chose to go out west with it. Uh, I just wanted something that was like a do it all reflex deflex longbow. So I went ahead and went on uh, South's website and looked at, the, looked at his different models of bows. I reached out to him and kind of asked him what he thought I should go with. And this is kind of where I ended up with the Coyote FXT with the ACS limbs. With the ACS limbs, you're gonna get roughly 10 feet a second faster out of the bow than you would with a standard set of limbs. So that's why I went with that. It is a little bit more expensive. Um, but uh, it's worth it for a guy like me that has a really short draw length. This bow is 60 inches long. This is uh, 51 pounds at 26 inch draw. I can't remember the woods that I had him use. I know it was black walnut and something else. I will link it in the video so that you guys know if you like the way this bow looks, you may want to order one yourself. Um, I did go with the satin finish. The bows are definitely prettier in a gloss finish, but I wanted something that was not shiny, something that the sun wouldn't glance off of if I want a turkey hunt with it, whatever it may be. Uh, but it's, it's a beautiful bow, uh, but I do think it would be prettier in a gloss finish over a satin finish. I ended up doing the deer antler tips. Um, that was a little bit of an extra charge but they're really, really, really pretty and they help strengthen the ends of this longbow. Another thing is this is not the string that came on the bow. This is actually an ABB uh, Flemish Twist, their Nomad series. That's what this is. I got this from Grafton. Uh, really the only reason I did this is one or two reasons. A little bit more speed out of this, this material and then two, uh, I wanted something that was a dull matte type fin uh, color what was on this bow from uh, Stalker was uh, red and yellow. I just wanted something different for the color. So that's why I ended up going with that. It's like a green and tan. Uh, these are just yarn, like sewing yarn um, that I've turned into puff balls. I had beaver balls on here originally and I wanted something different, a little bit lighter. Um, so I went with these. They seem to work fairly well. I've got them set at like 15 and 18 inches top and bottom, so I've got four of them on this bow. Um, but I've been pretty happy with how quiet this bow is anyway. Uh, right now, my brace height is a little shorter than it probably will be when I get done with it, done setting it up. It's like seven and three eighths right now. Uh, and it tends to shoot the best for me between that seven and three eighths and maybe seven and five eighths. Uh, but right now it's shooting great, so I'm not gonna touch it. I'm still letting the string kind of settle in. Once it does, I may do some tweaking and kind of fine tune that, maybe go a little bit uh, longer brace height, uh, but it just depends. Right now, this is where I've got it set at seven and three eighths. Um, if you'll notice right here, I've got a bright blue string. This is for my clicker. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I've got, got it silenced down pretty well so that when it does click, uh, it's mainly in the feel. I can mainly just feel it because 
the clicker that I had on my recurve, when I would draw it back, it would click just to the point where like deer were actually hearing that. So I've got this clicker set as quiet as I can get it. I've just put some um, like a felt type material on it to quieten it down. But I do really like a clicker. I know a lot of the more experienced guys probably won't run one because they know where their draw length is. But like for myself, I'm okay in the yard. I can draw back, I can get to the same anchor point. Um, but then when I get in a stand, I'm really bad about short drawing. So what this clicker does, it forces me to get all the way back into my draw and um, to get the same draw length every time because you will definitely change your point of impact a lot if you're shooting the way I do, which is by string walking. Um, but anyway, like I say, clicker, uh, I'll link what it is down below. I can't remember the brand, um, but I've been super impressed with them. They stay on the limb very well. Uh, I went with a bright blue um, piece of d -loop material there uh, for two reasons. One, my grandpa's favorite color was light blue. And two, it's bright. So if something happens and this gets pulled through when I'm in the field, I will see it better than I would something that's like a dull green color. So that's why I went with a brighter color material there. That's just like a little gee whiz thing. Maybe a tip might help you in the, in the future. Uh, for my knocking points, I've just got tied on, uh, served on knocking points. It came with a brass knocking point. I ended up taking that off. Right now I have my knocking point set at five eighths of an inch above center. Uh, and that's kind of like the sweet spot for me for this bow. It seems like that's about um, where my arrow uh, paper tunes out the best. So that's where I've got it set. If you got to go higher or lower than that, it's, it's super ind individual to each person. I am shooting three fingers under. So that's one thing to note. I shoot this thing three fingers under. I'm shooting a Yoast tab. Um, I just like this material. That's the Cordovan material. I like this tab in general. I've tried a couple, but this is the one that I, I've kind of settled in on this and I really like it. Don't remember the model. Most of this stuff I've either gotten from Grafton or I've gotten from Three Rivers, Three Rivers Archery. That's a very, very good um, website, like a centralized website for all things, all things traditional. Uh, and I've been very impressed with uh, the speed of, that they get the stuff out. For the most part, I try to go through Grafton, but there's there some things where it's easier just to go through Three Rivers because they specialize in traditional archery. Grafton Archery also has traditional archery equipment and they can get you what you need or point you in the right direction. So go check those guys out as well. Another thing on the bow before I get into some more of the accessories, there's a couple things here on the grip that you'll notice. Now this, I don't think I mentioned, this is a low grip. Um, Stalker uh, Stick Bows has multiple grip options, but this is the low grip. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the grips. I've only ever tried uh, my Hoyt and this. I'm still getting used to this grip versus something more traditional to a compound just because this is the first, you should, I could say like trad riser that I've shot. Um, but this is the grip that um, South recommended that I go with. It, for somebody that was used to shooting a compound, this is the grip that he recommended. But a couple things you'll notice, there is a piece of rubber on this grip and this is actually bicycle tubing. I got these two things, the bicycle tubing and this piece of zip tie. Those are two things that I got from Jason Samkoviak of uh, Traditional Wilderness Podcast. I got those from him. Go check out his stuff. He has a lot of great info out there on traditional hunting uh, and equipment. But I went with this rubber tubing for one reason. If you're in a stand, I've, I've had several times when I was hunting with my Hoyt where I'd go to hang my bow up or get it off to try to draw back on a deer, only to have my arrow fall off my shelf as I was shuffling back and forth. So what I did here is and I, this came from him, it's not something that I came up with, is I took a rubber bicycle tubing, cut it, took my limbs off, slid it up my riser, excuse me, and then I took a really short piece of uh, zip tie and I cut it. And what I did is I actually slid this zip tie under that rubber tubing and it sticks up just above 
Let me show you here real quick. It sticks up just above the shelf here. And what it does when you set an arrow on it, let me grab an arrow for you real quick. So when you set an arrow on it and you turn, tilt your bow, it catches it. It ain't going nowhere. So when you're moving back and forth in the stand, it really catches that arrow and it holds it. Now, something that you can do, I haven't been doing it, I haven't had to, but something that you can do, you can take your finger and just shove that thing down out of the way. Now your arrow comes off freely. Uh, my preference is actually just to leave it up. Uh, it hasn't seemed to affect my arrow flight uh, and it doesn't affect me as far as like feeling it in my grip. I know Jason said he doesn't care to feel it in his grip. Um, but for me, it doesn't seem to bother me, so I just leave it in there all the time. Uh, that's pretty much it on the bow for like some of the th stuff that I've done. Let's kind of look at the quiver. So this is something really cool. This is another, uh, another accessory that I heard of through Jason Samkoviak's YouTube channel. This is actually a great northern quiver, and I had them engrave the Buffalo Creek logo on it. It looks super sweet. This is their one piece quiver. I did this because I can actually just take this quiver completely off if I ever decide to go out west or if I wanna take it and put it in a case. I can take this quiver completely off. It's lightweight, it's quiet, um, and it just mounts directly to the limb bolts. There's two little brackets that come with the quiver. Those mount there on the riser or on the limb bolts instead of going up and down the limbs which can affect the tune of the bow um, they go to the limb bolts and i really like the stream how streamlined this quiver is and how well this thing fits to the bow this is their five arrow quiver i do have um, some little tabs that i can put on here these are made by these are called the piggybackers from selway uh, you can actually just attach that to one of your arrows and add another arrow to your quiver if you wanted to. Um, say something like a small game point, uh, you could add that there so you would actually have six arrows. I haven't done that and I don't know that I will, but I have those and I may, up, may end up eventually trying that. As far as my arrow setup, so this is something that I've been working on um, and I will actually do a full video on this setup and that's why you can see the belt sender in the background. This is a, so I actually met these guys. I've been using their wraps for years. These, these are actually made by White Rock, Whitewater Archery Products. So I've used the Whitewater wraps for years. Um, and I actually met these guys at the archery trade show this year, and I did not realize that they were making arrows. So I saw these arrows, these are their rangers, um, and I like them mainly because they have the wood um, wrap on them. It just looks more like a traditional arrow. It's not, it's a carbon arrow, but these are a 204 diameter. They have multiple sizes, and these are 400 spine. Uh, I'm not going to get 100% into my arrow setup. Uh, if you guys are interested in what arrow I'm shooting, I will definitely do a YouTube video on the full arrow setup and how I've, how I've put these together. But these are the Whitewater Archery Rangers. These are the 400s. Uh, I got a Whitewater's wrap on them in the blue. Um, and then I've got two of two actual turkey feathers off of a turkey that I shot in Kentucky last year. Uh, I'll actually do a video on how I make these fletchings. Uh, I just think it's pretty cool to be able to use something off of an animal that I've killed to put in my arrow setup. For an insert, I'm running some uh, stainless inserts from Whitewater, and then for the broadhead, I am using a Magnus 150 grain Stinger buzz cut with the um, two blade with bleeders. That's what I'm using there. So that's my full arrow setup. Like I said, I'll get into specifics in another video. Um, the arrows are definitely a little bit heavier than what I was initially wanting them to be. But this is the setup that ended up tuning the best out of this bow. So these arrows right now, the way they're set up uh, is 585 grains. So that's a little bit heavier than what a lot of people will shoot out of a 50 pound bow. Um, but these things tune awesome guys. 
And it was just kind of like one of those things where as I was tuning this bow, it was just like all of a sudden, boom, that setup was just head and shoulders above everything else I had shot. So let me shoot this thing real quick, get you a speed, and then we'll go outside and shoot a couple shots. hundred and sixty two feet a second hundred sixty two feet a second is not blazing by any means but with a 585 grain arrow that's not too shabby out of a 26 inch draw bow so let's head outside shoot this bow a few times and then we'll end the video off with some final thoughts and then we'll kind of jump into some more videos here in the future uh, jumping into hopefully like once a week, I'll get into maybe a trad bow uh, video of some sort. Comment down below with some of the things that you guys might want to see. So let's go ahead outside. All right, guys, I'm right here at 20 yards. Let's fling a couple arrows. Let you listen to the bow and see what you think. Like I said downstairs, I am string walking and I'm running three under. I kind of settled on string walking for a couple reasons. Like for myself being a, I would say like a novice trad bow guy, string walking kind of merged shooting with a sight and shooting without a sight. So. I use the tip of my arrow, I run my fingers up and down the string to change the angle and kind of where I'm aiming that, uh, feel, that point. The other options are like shooting completely instinctive or actually using like uh, your broadhead to kind of shoot, um, like use, a, use the pieces of your broadhead to kind of judge how high or low to aim. Um, for this arrow setup, my point on is 25 yards, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a point on of 25 yards because I would like to keep all my shots 25 yards or less. 30 yards is going to be my max, and the way this is set up, 30 yards, I put the point directly on the top of the back of the deer, squeeze or release my shot and it's perfect but like i said directly to the bottom of the arrow knock is 30 is 25 yards slightly down from that i have a mark which i will serve in uh, i'm actually going to do a video on how i do my knock sets and uh, do my actual like indication points for when i do my string walking um, but right now i'm slightly below that knock point that one kind of hit my arm that's one of the things I may end up having to adjust my brace height just slightly once the string fin finishes settling in. All right, let's shoot a couple more shots and uh, we'll finish this video off. I definitely need to get a little hip quiver for sure. It's pretty good guys for a novice guy, 20 yards, all those are good in the kill zone. Uh, don't be too rough on me on my form, but if any of you guys have any tips or tactics or critiques that I might could use in a constructive way, please comment down below and let me know. If there's anything on the trad side that you guys want to see, please comment down below and let me know what you guys want to see. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of this video. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. We'll catch you on the next video.